We're having that conversation, of course, on World Environment Day that was marked yesterday. Remember, it's 50 years anniversary uh, this year, of course. In studio, I have Anne Tech. She's the National Coordinator for Kenya Platform for Climate Governance. Thank you for making time. Thank you so much, Fathia, for inviting us. Right, let's start with, where did you mark World Environment Day yesterday? And what does it mean to you? Um, thank you so much once again for inviting the Kenya Platform for Climate Governance and Pagja for to this show today. Mm -hmm. uh, yesterday, we marked the World Environment Day uh, throughout the country in Kenya. We were in our regions, we were in Machakos, we were in Kakamega, we were in Nakuru, and we were in Transoia. So most of our work was more on cleanup, mm -hmm. um, sensitizing public on the, their role in terms of management of plastic pollution and environment at large. We had activities such as tree planting as well in some of our areas because we are spread all through the country. Some of our, our, our colleagues were also in the coast planting uh, mangroves. Uh, but regionally, we also had our countries such as Nigeria, mm -hmm. uh, Tanzania, Malawi participating in the, uh, the global campaign on uh, uh, beat the pollution campaign on plastics. Mm -hmm. Right, before we get into the deeper details, of course, of course, on climate action, let's talk about how do you think Kenya is performing in terms of um, the environment? Um, generally, we are, we, are doing, we are doing well in terms of uh, uh, putting legislations in place, having governance, I mean, uh, management of uh, environment largely. I know Kenya in terms of, uh, we were among the first or few countries in Africa or even globally who now have uh, legislation or, uh, uh, I mean, uh, the ban on plastic. Uh, we remember there was mm -hmm. a ban on the single-use uh, plastic. So we are among the progressive countries, not only on environment, but even on climate change. So we've really made progress. But there's more room for improvement because uh, there's a lot to be done in terms of sensitizing the public, taking actions as a, as a, as a public in terms of, uh, I mean, uh, the ban on plastics. Mm -hmm. There was a, uh, apparently there's a report, of course, saying that uh, Kenya is moving closer to beating plastic pollution. And that was, of course, there was a launch of the recyclability guidelines. Do you think that's true? Yes, you know, uh, the first step to ensuring that uh, we address plastic pollution is having, having a policy in place having, um, I mean, uh, guidance, guidelines in place. Mm -hmm. And the fact that first we have our constitution which uh, uh, addresses the rights to clean and, and healthy environment. We have the Environment and Management Act which generally defines uh, climate governance in the, I mean, environment governance in the country. Right. We d currently have the um, uh, Sustainable Waste Management Act and now the, the ban on plastics. So I can say we've, we've made some progress as a, as a country. Mm -hmm. What does climate governance mean? Oh, climate governance is uh, basically um, the general management of uh, climate, looking at the global frameworks and the country framework. For example, in Kenya, we have uh, our Climate Change Act, which defines how climate change is governed from the, both the national and the county government. Mm -hmm. We have uh, the Climate Change Council, which is the overall um, body which oversees the climate uh, actions in the country and is being chaired by the president. Mm -hmm. At the, um, uh, we, we do have uh, climate change um, uh, I mean, uh, managed even at the county level. So in Kenya, I mean, climate governance is basically looking at uh, the role of the public, the private sector, the civil society, and all actors in, in, in terms of uh, addressing climate mitigation, climate adaptation, and climate actions. Mm -hmm. well, yes, and, mm -hmm. and probably globally, we have a framework, the United Nations Framework or Convention on Climate Change, which provides for how climate is governed globally, looking at uh, uh, the Paris Agreement, uh, I mean, mm -hmm. how countries have committed to reducing the greenhouse gases emissions, and other frameworks addressing different actors, I mean, sectors in climate change, looking at frameworks on agriculture, on finance, on uh, loss and damage, adaptation, mitigation. So there's already a defined mm -hmm. uh, global framework on climate change. Um, I mean, even with our, our local frameworks uh, governing climate change. 
Do you think the president is doing enough? Of course, President Ruto has been on the forefront when it comes to climate change. Um, tell us more about that. Yes, I can say he is doing is doing well. One, uh, I, I'd said before, Kenya, we've really done good in terms of uh, we are one of the countries in Africa or even globally who have a very progressive law on climate change, the climate change action. I mean, the Climate Change Act of 2016. Mm -hmm. We do have uh, many policies on climate change, the Climate Change Response Strategy of 20, 2010. We, even the counties themselves have their own specific legislations on climate change. But as a president, first look at dur during his inauguration, he mentioned that uh, his, uh, one of his agenda would be to address climate change. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, one of the uh, uh, national celebrations, it, it talks about uh, uh, the need to conserve environment by I mean, ensuring that we have uh, uh, rangers within the forests. I mean, that's, uh, that's one of the initiatives. Mm -hmm. He now has the initiatives of uh, the initiative on the, the 15 billion tree campaign. So we've seen uh, our president um, setting the pace as one of the African presidents I mean, uh, who's taken really uh, good strides in terms of uh, climate change action. Mm -hmm. Before we go to the region and talk about climate change, especially here in Africa, um, here in Kenya, how are you creating awareness for people to know the importance of preserving or conserving the environment? Um, as um, our civil society groups, uh, we first uh, I mean, create awareness in terms of building capacities of our communities or in terms of uh, using media such as uh, this mainstream media mm -hmm. we use we have a lot of uh, engagement in terms of our social media just to reach uh, i mean specific target groups just to teach people on climate change and environment issues we do have uh, community actions even uh, at the local level that addresses uh, uh, community i mean climate uh, climate and environment I want to mention one of our initiatives called the Young Digital Activists. We are now mobilizing uh, young people so that they are able to tell stories on climate change. We are now engaging uh, young people uh, to have uh, unique programs like art, like um, sports, uh, to address climate change and environment. Mm -hmm. We do, uh, I mean, we do have a lot of uh, products that support uh, climate change. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, awareness in the country. So we, we really, I mean, support uh, such, in, uh, such in initiatives such as uh, creating awareness on areas of climate change and mm -hmm. uh, environment in the country. What about climate financing? What are you doing as your organization, as the national coordinator? Um, climate finance is actually an enabler of climate action. Climate finance is uh, our, uh, I mean, f uh, money, uh, either from local, uh, public, uh, private, or uh, international community that are uh, meant for addressing climate actions. Uh, climate finance, uh, we have climate finance from the, global, um, and from the global partners and we have climate finance even within, within, within the country. If you look at uh, global finance, if you look at the Paris Agreement, it actually talks about how developed countries should support uh, the most vulnerable, the developing countries in terms of uh, financing climate action so that they're able to, to create resilience. So climate finance is that money meant to support climate actions. And uh, what we're doing is, um, is a, K a Kenya platform for climate and governance and also the Pan-African Climate Justice Alliance is one advocate for ensuring that we have um, enough finances uh, globally coming to uh, developing countries to address uh, climate actions. I know there's been a lot of debate on uh, now that Africa, we emit less than 4% uh, of the greenhouse gases mm -hmm. and the uh, polluters who are the developed countries should pay for, for their, I mean, for emitting, uh, I mean, uh, for emitting greenhouse gases. So we advocate a lot to ensure that that money comes down to, I mean, the, the developing countries, and not just come, but also ensure that it's easier to mm -hmm. tap uh, climate finance, and uh, also advocating for transparency in terms of climate finance. 
and locally, I know um, even for the, for Kenya, uh, there is a, there is money that is meant for climate finance under the Climate Change Act. Mm -hmm. At the counties, most of the counties now have located around 1.5 to 2 percent of the of the budgets to climate change. And our work is to ensure that that money goes down to the communities, that money is used well. And I mean, we can see uh, actions in terms of the, the use of that money. Yeah, that's very crucial. Let's now talk about the region, of course. If I could point out a country like Rwanda has been doing very well in terms of like clean up, making the city uh, clean. What other country can you point out in terms of, you know, uh, climate change and is doing well? I know in terms of uh, ban on plastic, I want to believe, and also generally on climate change, I know China is also going towards that direction. Mm -hmm. Tanzania is also uh, going that direction. We've done it as Kenya. And I think what they've done is one, to put in place a policy uh, to govern uh, ban on plastic, and especially on, on climate change. And not just uh, to have a policy in place, but they've managed to also engage the public uh, I mean, uh, the public has, has really um, participated a lot in terms of taking responsibility mm -hmm. and um, ensuring that those who dump are able to be uh, able to be uh, penalized. So it's it's both um, public and uh, I mean uh, community action that really ensures that we we address the issues of plastic pollution. Mm -hmm. So those are some of the countries who've managed to I um, mean address issues of plastic pollution and I know more more countries are going that direction. In terms of challenges as an organization what challenges are you facing in the country at the moment? In terms of climate change and environment, yes, or well, even just in terms of policy and making sure that it's implemented. Yeah, um, I, I mean, I, as I'd said, we do have a lot of policies governing climate change and environment and, I mean, natural resources. But one of the challenges has been implementation. We do have, like, we have enough, but we don't see, I mean, we need to implement these uh, uh, policies. Second is also financing because some of these actions need a budget. So um, there's need to also ensure that we have, we allocate enough money for uh, climate and environment actions. Another challenge would be uh, capacity. I mean, mm -hmm. people don't really know. <laughs> you, you go to the village and tell people about climate change or environment, they ask you what it is. Yeah. So that has been the biggest uh, gap as well. So people don't really understand. Uh, the other issue is uh, partnership. I think um, there's need to really uh, promote partnership between the public and the private sector, the non the governmental sector, and also the communities. So that partnership is key in terms of ensuring that uh, these actions are implemented. Right. In terms of, you know, bringing people together or mobilizing people, you said one of the challenges is people understanding. Mm -hmm. If you, in your opinion, if you had the power to you know, mobilize people, what would you do? Especially young people and people who live in areas that don't have a lot of awareness when it comes to climate change. Yeah, and uh, I think <coughs> our target uh, group uh, as we work uh, with our civil society is the youth and especially women and the, uh, the most vulnerable groups. I mean, as we, as we work, we ensure that those groups are, uh, are targeted. Uh, we've, seen, we've seen youth countrywide really um, come up and uh, uh, take action in terms of uh, climate change and environment. We've seen youth now um, uh, have, uh, doing tree planting activities. We've seen youth engaging in uh, cleanup activities. We've seen youth um, uh, sensitizing the public on, on, on areas of climate change and, uh, and environment. So, uh, I mean, there's a bit of challenge in terms of supporting, I mean, they, they, we have a number of youth, unemployed youth in the mm -hmm. country. Uh, one is ensuring that they take up those actions, but they're also able to provide for themselves. Another challenge is for them to understand, really, like I said, capacity is still a big area. We need to engage our youth and ensure that they, they also understand before even they, they support in terms of um, sensitization. And women as well. Yes. Women are, are one of the groups uh, that are being affected by climate change and environment. Mm -hmm. And um, we need to engage this group. So a lot of work needs to be done. Right. Thank you. That is Antec. She is the National Coordinator for Kenya Platform for Climate Governance. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. All right, that's it for Africa Speaks. Thank you for watching. My name is Fatima.